everyone, and welcome to the Sydney St. James Show. Well, we're back as promised with podcast episode nine, the making of the final chapter of the Storm Lord trilogy, Three Keys to Armageddon. This is the last novel in the Storm Lord trilogy series, and it's also the final chapter named The Three Keys of Armageddon. You know, when writing this novel, I wanted to do something that I haven't done in all my previous novels. I really wanted to go out with a bang. And so I pulled all the stops out and did my very best to overwhelm all my readers in this concluding novel, The Three Keys to Armageddon. Will Gabriel blow his horn? And no, I'm not talking about the University of Texas fight song. I'm talking about the real Gabriel. And will he blow his horn? Or will he sit up on some lonely roof- rooftop and look down. No, let's not give away any spoilers on the book. So, in either case, hold your breath, because every single turn of the page will blow you away. Using the rich background of the spiritual world of Archangels Michael and his sword of angels, and Gabriel with his trumpet of victory in the background, the Storm Lord trilogy series will pursue the return of Satan himself with a paranormal bent world of evil versus good filled with all of our captivating characters. The ever-moving series sharp dialogue the highly original plot lines and the stylistic flair is as rhythmic and vibrant as all the works written under my earlier pen name. These three novels in the three book Storm Lord trilogy series are provocative. They're confrontational and They contain such highly created twists and turns into the unexpected. But when they do, it's always with a healthy dose of humor. Not to mention real classy romance. Yep. And oh well, I always get into that classy because I must admit I had a lot of fun writing some of these. um, Well, I'm getting off the subject. So anyhow... Let's just say there's a lot of doses in humor in the book, no matter how intense the circumstances might become. I do my very best in this final episode of the series by improvising. I totally leave reality, and I go up and I touch the sky, and returning often with such descriptive style, and I really worked hard on that, it will hopefully leave each of my readers on the edge of their seats. Now, let me just toss in a short snippet from one of the beginning paragraphs in the book. The fire crackled and popped. Each of the scarlet flickers radiated heat while Nikki drew the quilt up snugly around her body. She stared out the nearby bay window and realized it was a perfect day to just simply curl up and finish reading Hidden Waterfalls, a children's fantasy by Vanessa Jean. But not before she fell asleep. Freddy Krueger, move over. You're no match for Ethan Knight. The air was somewhat dusty, making Nikki's nose itch as she breathed in sharply before sneezing. Her eyes fluttered open. Or did they? 
The room had turned completely dark, and only the shadows of unusual apparitions danced across the walls beside her. Okay, now, whew, back to the real world, everyone. In this final chapter of the Storm Lord series, Nikki Connors must find the three keys to Armageddon, or all hell will break loose. And I mean that literally. One of the 12 quests pits our heroine against evil, out to destroy the goodness in the world. Oh, okay. Halt reset for just a moment. As I mentioned earlier in the podcast, and as well as the earlier episodes have shown, this is the making of the Storm Lord trilogy this episode is about. So, let's go into a little bit of the making, and that is two questions I had deep into the book. Who should be the hero? The man or the woman? So, as I always do on, on, on the writing of all my books, I'm sitting here, I'm writing, and all of a sudden I stop, and I said, honey, I got a problem over here. And she'll usually say, what's that? Well, I got this man, one of my characters, and I got this woman over here, and I can't figure out who I'm going to kill. In this case, I needed to make one or the other the hero. So I asked her that question. And she said to me, well, okay, the woman, of course. Well, okay, that answered that. But then I was in my final fight scene of the novel, probably within the last 20 pages, and between our heroine and our hero, someone needed to die. Don't ask me why. I just felt like with all the action and everything going on around these two, I didn't want my reader to think that, oh, come on now, really? You mean they survived all of this and everybody else died? That can't happen that way. So I had to, I had to kill somebody. So who was I going to kill? I couldn't make up my mind. So, again, I go to the source of all my questions of my writings and ask my wife, who should die? Now, if you're sitting there listening to me and you said, the heroine, you would be right. But if you were to ask me if I decided to take her input on that question, to be perfectly honest, I don't remember. But never mind that. Let's get back to our novel. Nikki, along with her mother, Angel Thompson, were propelled into challenges in which they could die at every turn. Action on their part is required every single step of the way to keep the world good, balanced, and in peace. So, without further ado, let's get to that snippet from the novel that I know everyone's been waiting for. But, before we do, a few words from my sponsor, Anchor FM. And then we'll be right back with that snippet. Have you heard about Anchor.fm by Spotify? It's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Yep, Anchor has the tools that will allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Come with me, child. We can talk better in the gardens. Shannon's wings projected from her shoulders. She wrapped them around Nikki and was but a split instant and off she flew on her second journey up through the clear blue sky. 
Nikki's feet touched the green lawn of the beautiful gardens she visited a day earlier. She can't help but notice Shannon looking sad, and her voice, when she spoke, appeared low and mournful. Nikki's fairy friend led her by the hand to a seat in a quiet, shady little dale. Nikki, she said, I'm now about to tell you what I've been sent here to prepare you for in your destiny. It will be the same instructions I have mentioned to so many others before you. Those before me? Did they fulfill this destiny, Shannon? There was a brief touch of sadness and hesitation in the cherub's voice. No, my dear, they didn't. She ended her hesitation, her voice shaking from what she had to say. Because it was never written in the prophecy of the evil one's return, only you, Nikki, can find the good side and not be swayed to the evil side. And only you and you alone. Okay, Shannon, enough. What is it I must do? Strange and disquieting thoughts began to race through her mind. Behind your cottage, there are distant hills off the highway that run to Portland. We call the area the Country of Shadows. There's a vast dark forest there. The breezes and the light never reach the overgrown area halfway up until it reaches the side of the tree line. Nikki listened, not drifting off whatsoever with thoughts of the beauty of the garden as she did the last time she was there. Shannon continued, The hills are hard to climb. The icy river is shallow, but very treacherous to cross, numbing and chilling one's legs who might try to pass. The cold water will take what it does not need. When crossing, your blood will seem to freeze in your veins. The current of the flowing rigid water is robust enough to take one downstream if not careful. One must stay in the shallows of the current. Nikki's thoughts, while scrutinizing the beautiful gardens around her, in no time were absorbed by the dangers Shannon explained. Okay, let me get this straight. Shannon, so what you're telling me is to hurry and cross the river or I will surely die from the cold waters, right? Is, is that what you're saying? Yes, child. That is your first test. Okay, we'll keep going. Mixed feelings surged within her. Once reaching the mountains behind the hills, across the river is the mountain of obstacles. You must take great care as you climb this mountain. The rocks are steep, and the rolling stones have pointed and jagged edges and can easily cut one's skin. Shannon lowered her wings to where they closed tightly and drawn in tight against her back. Shannon, can I ask you a question? Of course, dear. Is this message and request something sent from God? The angel sat down on a rock and spoke softly in return to Nikki, much like her mother would do when she was having a serious talk with her. Dear, you've read the prophecy. In it, you were told the end times would come, and no doubt was confused. Yes, I did, and still I don't know for sure what it really means. Nikki, the end times come whenever the earth goes past the tipping point. All life as you know it will suffer from that point on. Right now, earth can still become heaven. But within a few days, if you're not successful, that won't be possible anymore. So, what you're telling me, Shannon, is that instead of the earth ending on my birthday as we know it, I must succeed and fulfill the prophecy 
to see another day, right? Is, is, is that what you're telling me, Shannon? Her mind was a surging perplexity. Your soul, dear, and everyone else's is immortal. They belong to God. He can't lose you because that spark in you that innately knows what is right and what is wrong is still part of the divine. It's still connected. Oh, you're talking in circles, Shannon. What do you mean? She wore a puzzled expression. There simply is no other place for God to put you other than right there on earth. You evolved there. It's your home. The prophecy you read, along with many others that have been written, have been harmful in that they encourage an attitude of the earth as being disposable. They all suggest and caution that you leave earth behind for a better place. Run. That's what it says. I understand, Shannon. So... If I understand it right, if I'm unsuccessful in fulfilling this prophecy, she paused her words for just a moment. If the earth is destroyed, we are destroying heaven and making hell, right? That is exactly right, my dear. Nikki was quick to request what it was she must do. All right? What is it you are asking of me? Continue, please. On the top of the mountain grows the tree of love and healing. There's only one fruit on the tree, and that fruit is the cure for every ill and every handicap the stolen children might have when you arrive. You must retrieve that fruit. You must, my dear, Save the children. The angel paused for just a moment. Nikki looked up at her with shining eyes. If I'm successful at retrieving this fruit, can it make blind people see? Can it cure individuals who are lame? Can it... Her words were interrupted by Shannon's quick answer. Yes, yes, my dear. Once you have the fruit, it can cure anything and everything that ails the children, answered the angel gravely. But Nikki, oh, my child, it is so, so hard to get. Beneath that tree sleeps a large black dragon. He is the dark angel of shadows. He guards the tree against all who come. Oh, so now you're saying I must fight a dragon. Is that right? Nikki tried to force her confused emotions into order. Yes, my dear, but not just any dragon. Lucifer himself chose this dragon many, many years ago to guard the tree. Some prophets say he's always present within the dragon and has prior knowledge of every encounter that's coming his way. I'll, I'll be no match for such a creature, Shannon. How does anyone tackle such an impossible quest? Especially... If the dragon recognizes my approach before I even get there. Two reasons you can do this, my child. The last time we ventured, you and I discussed faith in our Father in Heaven, always knowing He is with you. Yes, Shannon. I remember. Well, that brings us to a close on Episode 9, The Making of the Three Keys of Armageddon. I hope you enjoyed it today, and I hope you'll run out there and grab the book and read all the 12 quests throughout the final conclusion to the Storm Lord Trilogy series. A good friend of mine, another author, 
Sean Jacobs, the author of The Eye of the Storm, was on my show last year and had this to say about the Storm Lord Trilogy series. I really enjoy reading books with kick-butt female characters. Nikki Connors is definitely one of them. She's probably one of the most enigmatic and level-headed heroines in paranormal romance today. There are so many things I could say about this character. She's tough. She's brave and relentless. And she's smart. In short, she's an amazing young woman. Well, that wraps it up for my show today. I hope for all my fans that you found the conclusion to this series a wrap. Oh, and yes, I hope the right person lived and the right person turned out to be your favorite hero or your favorite heroine. Next week in episode 10, we will kick off the Love Lost series. There are eight, uh, eight or nine books, I believe, in that series, and they're all full of mystery with love and passion. Not to mention not knowing who done it until the end of the novels. Well, until then, happy listing from yours truly, Sydney St. James. All three novels in the Storm Lord trilogy series are for readers and listeners of 18 years of age or older. <laughs>